guys, we are here at uh, Gamescom 2022 uh, <laughs> with Tom Heaton of Supermassive Games and we're going to talk about the new game, The Devil Me. Uh, maybe it's the first question, you showed some, some new gameplay mechanics, um, could you tell us more about it? Oh sure, so um, very exciting in The, in the Devil in Me, um, which is uh, the season one finale, and because it's the season one finale, um, we always introduce new mechanics actually, every time we, we do a new installment of a Dark Pictures game, but this one, um, th there's quite a lot of changes. Uh, and the, this, this, they fall into three types. The first is we've looked at adding more for the player to do and more player agency when, the, when they're exploring. So um, we've always had these environments that you can explore, they're creepy, they look beautiful, they're moodily lit, um, but now you can, players can jump over things, climb things, they can kind of crawl under things like maybe a collapsed ceiling or something like that. They can crouch, they can squeeze through gaps mm -hmm. to find hidden bits of the level. Um, they can shimmy across ledges, they can balance across beams. It's a whole suite of things that the, the player can do just to make it more active when they're exploring and it allows our teams um, are the people that make our environments, the level designers, the production design department, to create, make the levels um, a bit more complex, a bit more non-linear. They can put surprises in there. They can hide things in the level that you have to find. They can create little puzzles, like how do I get across to that area there? It seems impossible, but there must be a way. Um, so yeah, and it just keeps the player active all the time. Um, the second feature is we've added um, a simple inventory to the game. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, players and characters can get tools that they can find in the world or items that they can find. And each of the, the characters that you play, they're all part of a film crew. So they have equipment related to their role in the film crew. So Mark, he's the cameraman. He's got this camera. He can take pictures, gather evidence of the, of the things they're, they're witnessing. Erin, who's the audio tech, she has this... Um, really nice directional microphone which is very sensitive and which she can aim in the world and hear things like conversations or machinery or someone's footsteps and that kind of gives her clues about how to survive um so yeah they've got a bunch of a bunch of tools and those tools they can lose them they can upgrade them not all of them but some of them can be upgraded some of them can be broken they and they plug into the branching nature of our games as well at key points if you've got a certain tool then the story will go uh, one way but if you haven't it'll go, go another way and then finally um, we've added uh, a bunch of puzzles to the game uh, so so things to make the player think it's things like uh, keypads that re require a code to progress and you have to go and find that code or work out what it could be mm -hmm. uh, we've got um, old fuse box the game is set in an old hotel and there's kind of antique fuse boxes that you can hack and, and rewire and try and blow the circuits um, and we've got things like mazes things that are a little bit like escape rooms so it's a, it's a really quite a large amount of of new features at the same time um, we are it's still a dark pictures game there's still all the things that the people like in a dark pictures game the branching the strong narrative mm -hmm. the strong characters that's all still there it's still recognizably a dark pictures game but with with a ton of new stuff to play with so since the games come out so fast uh, how do you manage to keep up with uh, player feedback between uh, the games sure yeah so we're always interested in player feedback every time we launch a game uh we do a bit of a post-mortem we look at all the reviews uh, and kind of and kind of build a big Excel spreadsheet of uh, of all the feedback and who said what and you know how many people agree with them and things like that. We look at the fan feedback, uh, you know things like uh, Twitter and, and Reddit, and also fans just write to us um, mm -hmm. with, with their feedback on the game. So that's awesome. We're, we're, we love that stuff. We're um, we're very proud of the community that we built. Um, and uh, we have discussions amongst ourselves, you know, as a, as a team. Of course, people have got ideas. And we work out w w which of that feedback we're going to bring into the game and uh, or, or what we're going to do with it. Um, sometimes we can get it 
into the next game. That you know, we build games. Um, the multiple games are being built uh, as we speak, uh, and at any one time. So, so games tend to be quite uh, full in development by the time uh, the next game to be, it tends to be full in development by the time the game launches. So sometimes we can we can get things into that game, especially if they're small things, if they're quality of life things. Um, but sometimes we have to say we're not, we're going to skip this game, but then this bit of feedback is going to go into the next game along. So it's, it's an incremental process of improving the games. Mm -hmm. uh, you always cast uh, an, an special actor for each game. Um, was there a time when you uh, planned on getting someone else and, and that you didn't get that actor for the game or did you have other plans for other actors in, in your games? Um, certainly that has happened, but it actually didn't happen on uh, The Devil in Me. We were really um, lucky, and partly because of COVID and the pandemic, which, which actually was very problematic for us, like for everyone else, mm -hmm. but it did mean that lots of actors were available when we were looking to cast this game. Um, so uh, we do our casting through a casting agent now. When Jessie Buckley came up, I was very keen for her to be in the game. She's a really great actress, Oscar nominated, BAFTA nominated, Olivia Award winner. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we've seen her performances in TV and, and films. So I, she was, for me, she was perfect for the role of Kate. And um, lucky for us, she agreed to do it. It was fantastic. But um, yeah, the, ca the, the casting has been great on this one. We've put together a really great cast. Um, who really work well together, can riff off each other. So yeah, it's, it's really good. Uh, you draw a lot of inspiration from different horror sources. Um, is there one movie or TV show you would say that is, you could never imagine that you uh, could adapt as a video game? Like it's impossible for you? Or no, I, I, I don't think there is any. Because what we've built is a very flexible thing for telling horror stories. So we can kind of look at any horror story uh, and work out how how we would do that. I mean, you know, we, we're always loose, a bit loose with our influences. So we're not tied into it. But if you can do it in film and you can do it in, in TV, then you would be, we would be able to make a game that was uh, in that same genre for mm -hmm. definite. Uh, since it's the, the season finale, um Do you get any special thing that you can hint on uh, planned, or uh, uh, some some branching between the games that you have uh, that you have to play every game in the Dark Pictures series to to see or get? Or um, so uh, yeah, this is the season one finale. Um, I can't say much about season two except that it's definitely coming and it's going to be really exciting. And we will continue all these gameplay improvements in, into the next season. Um, We do put, um, which, which possibly your listeners are aware of, we put kind of Easter eggs into each game that hint at other games, hint at games in the future, but also look backwards to, get to games in the, uh, the, the past. There, there isn't a, some secret unlockable that you can get if you collect all those, because that's, that's very difficult to do technically. Mm. Um, but yeah, we love, we love the way that people uh, look at those Easter eggs and especially the ones for the future and they try and work out what the games are and they try and work out what does it mean. And sometimes they are incredibly accurate with that and it's scary and we think, how did they get, how did they work that out from what little we've given them? And sometimes they are so off the mark and we don't let on which is which. <laughs> Uh, since people um, uh, uh, um, laughed uh, until dawn, and the, the new game, uh, the Quarry, um, could you give us an, an inside look behind the scenes? Uh, what's the difference between working on games like that and and the anthology, like the scale of the studio, um, how much time you got between each game? Um, it was just a, it's a very it's a very different thing actually. I mean, in, in a way, they're similar because they they're, they're working in narrative and they're working in horror. But you know, the quarry uh, until dawn well, that was a full studio mm -hmm. uh, effort, but it was quite a long time ago now. The quarry was a completely separate team from from the dark pictures, um, and there isn't a lot of crossover in the teams. With with, with the dark pictures. Um, we were working on shorter experiences, but the, but the Devil in Me is actually a little bit longer. It's, it's going to be about seven hours. Mm -hmm. um, and we're working with a team that is, um, is used to working on these games, understands how these games work, has built up a lot of techniques. So we can, you know, we go from Little Hope to House of Ashes, 
uh, to the devil in me and, and some of those people will have worked on all of those games and, and, and learned how, how we do them so we're doing something a little bit different from the from the quarry we've got our own thing at the moment we're a little bit darker uh, the stories are a little bit um, more serious but we still have the the, the, the fun moments and the light-hearted moments mm -hmm. That's fun. The question is there one uh, part you really want people to know about the Devil in Me? What, what makes it stand out to the other games? Um, well, I think uh, the new features are important, and we've we've talked about those, and we hope mm -hmm. people are, are excited about those. Um, we have, I think, uh, created a very compelling story. Uh, serial killers are um, a thing that uh, a lot of people relate to even if they're not really interested in horror or, or gaming a lot of people uh, are interested in serial killers and will listen to podcasts and read books about them mm. so we think there's a, there's a, a really broad appeal but um yeah we've we've i think we've created a really good story the cast is great the characters are great uh once again um you'll be the person as the player that's in ultimate control Every, all of those characters can live to the end of the night and all of them can die and it's it's up to you what happens and uh, we hope people in enjoy playing it sounds great thank you for your time thank you for having me <laughs> perfect